A few years ago, the first time I heard about SeatGeek, I thought to myself, I just don't understand why they need another one of these companies. They all do it the same exact way. Then I actually checked them out in case I was wrong, and boy was I wrong. When you're buying tickets with SeatGeek, you can zoom in and see the exact row you're sitting in and where they are in the stadium. Plus, they're color-coded based on value of the ticket. I haven't visited the other sites for my tickets since the first time I used SeatGeek. It's just a phenomenal experience. Uh, buying tickets can be complicated, but SeatGeek, it's simple and it's the smartest way to buy. Plus, the mobile experience is every bit as great. Make SeatGeek your go-to site, and I'm certain you won't regret it. We've also got a deal for our listeners. You get $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase if you download the SeatGeek app and enter the promo code FANTASYPROS. Again, that's promo code FANTASYPROS for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. All right, let's talk some football. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Fantasy Pros Football Podcast with Mike Tagliere and I'm Bobby Sylvester. Tags the waiver wire this week has me drooling, man. Six potential starting running backs available in 70% of leagues. Well, that's crazy. I was actually thinking myself that this was like a weaker waiver wire week. Wrong. Like, I don't know. It's just been really uh, an up and down ride for me with the waiver wire. It feels like there's always somebody every week. And I do have one player who's kind of like an, a must add for me in all leagues that we're going to talk about. But I want to say, I just want to announce... I listen to Spotify today. Like I listen to Spotify every day and my, my, my playlist. So I put in nineties playlist. So it popped up like offspring and stuff like that. Nirvana playing from back my like teenage years. I'm having an awesome day. Man, you're old. <laughs> Real nice, Bobby. Real Sorry, nice. Man. Make me feel great. <laughs> so today we'll be chatting about the waiver wire with our guest, Mike, the hitman, right of the fantasy footballers podcast. You can find him on Twitter at FF hitman. Mike, how's it going? It's going fantastic. If you guys want to pivot from waiver wire to just discussing the hits of Offspring, I am all about that life. Uh, I was a huge Offspring fan growing up in my in my uh, mid youth there, so I'm all about it. Tags. I don't know if I've heard of Offspring. I'm mean, like I'm sure what? I've heard some of their are songs. Are you 12 but, like, years old? What are you talking about? That's what I'm the saying. Offspring. You have three kids, Bobby. You have to know who Offspring is. Like, I don't know how you don't. Smash is a legendary record, man. Get it together. Never heard self of it, man. Esteem. I, I, I was just playing. Really like music too much. Like, I just oh. like fantasy football. Clearly, man. Oh. clearly, you don't like music. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm this... just messing with you guys, you dorks. <laughs> oh my god, I I really thought you were serious that you didn't know who the Offspring were. I was about to lose my mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> guys, we had some big injuries, plenty of weird snap counts. So let's chat about some of this news for just a couple minutes. Then we can see if we can get to like the top 20 waiver wire options. I guess we've got to start with this Odell Beckham, that nasty ankle injury, guys. Oof. Yeah, it yeah. was rough. It was it was pretty ugly. I was worried that it was more than an ankle. Yeah, that- I thought it might be like a career type of changing thing, but uh, it looks like yeah, they're just going to shut him down. I mean, the Giants are horrible anyway, so might as well get your man right. I mean, he broke the ankle. It's not like he's going to play on that, but no, no, he's having surgery. They did announce that it's 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 season ending, and that that was kind of to be expected. But on top of that, they they had injuries to both Brandon Marshall and Sterling Shepard. Uh, you know, we and don't Harris. know. What, well, yeah, well, Dwayne Harris. I don't know if we can really count him as a wide receiver. Are you st- at the when you've lost your top three guys, you have to actually <laughs> factor in Dwayne Harris is not going to be back. Can we talk about for a quick second, like how you guys view? Like, I think this is necessary for our listeners. How do you guys view Sterling Shepard going forward? Do you would you say like let's pretend that his ankle's fine, that he's going to come back and play uh, next week? That now, granted, they play the Broncos, it's a tough matchup. But how do you view him going forward? Like he was a guy that was seeing targets to begin with. He was being yeah. extremely efficient with those targets. Is he like an every every week starter now? No, no. He becomes you know, like a a wide receiver three type player for me. I mean, you had that yes. first week, eight targets, seven for forty four. It's just a matter of what can that offense do when they don't have game-breaking Odell Beckham to open things up. I mean, you, you saw what happened those first two weeks, the one game without Beckham, the one where he was still kind of coming back it, before Eli really took off and started having a couple good games. I don't think Shepard is a one. He can't take over, but he's he's a fine wide receiver for fantasy football. You know that he will see the targets, especially – with all the injuries going on, of uh, I mean, who knows who if Marshall's going to be back? Roger, are you counting on Roger Lewis? Is this where we are for the New right. York Giants? We have to. So we we have to. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, you probably do have. Well, the team has to. But for fantasy purposes, Shepard is 
he's likely the only one that I'm interested in. We saw what happened to Brandon Marshall those first couple weeks without uh, without Odo Beckham alleviating some of that pressure, uh, defensive pressure against him. But he's he's a fine wide receiver three, and you know that the there is there is upside there for Shepard on a weekly basis, but I wouldn't expect more than that. You know, twenty eight. I think there's more upside for Evan Ingram. I know Evan, Evan Ingram in- got oh uh, yeah got this, the double zero um, this week, which is just incredible that that happened. By the way, um, but yeah, he's been getting a lot of targets, and there's more value for a guy like that at tight end. Whereas Shepard, yeah, I've got him a wide receiver three. He's a little better than a Marquise Lee for me, just because Eli's better. Hey, by the way, guys. I was looking this morning. Can you guess what team is leading the NFL in point differential right now? Oh, Ooh, I'll give you a hint. Their quarterback, their quarterback is third on their team in fantasy scoring. <laughs> oh wow, it's a good. I don't know. Uh, I don't know the answer to this question. Yeah, I don't either. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> what? The Jacksonville makes, Jaguars oh. are leading in point differential, even though they got blown out by the Titans. That's pretty insane. Um, well, they've, they, they've dominated a couple teams, including Ben Roethlisberger this week, who, by the way, was interviewed after the game and said, maybe I don't have it. That doesn't sound like a guy who wants to compete right now. Like, I, I don't know. I don't I can't I can't ever envision someone like Tom Brady saying that uh, I can't envision someone like Michael Jordan saying that. So Ben Roethlisberger, if you want to be considered among the greats in the game, that's not something you'd say uh, after a game where you just had five interceptions against the Jaguars defense. They made some uh, plays, man. It's not like he was making bad passes. The Jaguars, I he, mean, Jalen Ramsey's uh, diving for that one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we, Mike and I are on the same page here. We just went back. I mean, the one, the batted pass where the defensive lineman knocked it right into the into the hands of the defense. I mean, that was a pretty fluky one but the rest of them are I mean he threw into triple coverage he overthrew a guy by 10 yards he underthrew uh someone in the end zone so but I mean we had this off season where news seemingly came out of nowhere that Ben Roethlisberger may retire and all of yeah. us fantasy players and football fans like yeah this is just him trying to get Lev Bell back trying to get Antonio Brown back but he's I think this is legitimately the, the last year of Ben Roethlisberger's career. Yeah, it's and it's scary be. because the Steelers missed on Josh Dobbs. Like, that was the worst. I wanted them to get to Sean Kaiser, who, by the way, got benched this week. But hey, touching back real quick, I just want to say that guys out there, if you have Brandon Marshall on your team and you can trade him away right now, do it. And it's not, and you know, I, I know he's hurt and I understand that, but people are going to be like, oh, Beckham's out. Marshall's going to be fine. If you didn't drop him already, though, I don't know what you're doing. Like, you should be rethinking yourself like Big Ben. <laughs> but even if you go back to his year, his last year with the Bears, any Bears fan that watched Brandon Marshall play in 2014 it was uh he played he tried playing through an ankle injury the majority of the season and he was awful like Good call. you do not want to trust Brandon Marshall uh that's why I think Sterling Shepard is an actual actual like almost every week play and Roger Lewis has to be taken into consideration but I do think you guys are right on the Evan Ingram call so I don't want to just go on injuries for so long so I'm just going to list what right. we have you guys tell me what concerns you here Travis Kelsey concussion uh, J.J. Watt out for the season. Houston's defense was really good last year with J.J. Watt out. Uh, Blaw Powell calf injury. Matthew Stafford was limping. Didn't say what his injury was. Terrence West, Devontae Parker, Charles Clay, Rob Gronkowski missed last week. Uh, Mike, do any of these really concern you, or are they just kind of uh, shorter things here? I, I think they're all shorter. The Gronk one is the most concerning. Not yep, from, me too. Not, not from the fact of, I, I believe he's going to play. All reports are he's going to play, but... I, I think it was just last year where we had this. Everyone's just strolling through the meadows. You know, we got Gronkowski. All of a sudden, he just pops up on an injury report. You're like, oh, that's that's kind of weird, but I'll still play him. He's Gronk. He's better than everybody else. Oh, Gronk is out. Oh, crap. I got to <laughs> find a new option for this week. And Gronk's having season-ending surgery. Like, what? what? How did that happen? <laughs> I mean, I mean, they went from, from zero to 100 in the span of just a few hours, it felt like last year. So that's that's my only concern for Gronk is that he's been so injury riddled his entire career. His body just does not seem to respond to just injuries and the, and the game of football in general. So that's where you just you have that uh that that low that anxiety that will just plague you every single day. Going oh crap is is Gronk gonna start missing actual time again the reports are he will play next week and this could have just been a hedge by the Patriots thinking that they could manhandle the Bucks on on a short week yeah mm-hmm. they they got it right they won so perhaps that was just a little bit of a gamble 
So he was drafted between 15 and 25. Like if you were doing your draft now, how high would you take Gronk? Like that's how I like to weigh trade value is where would I draft them now for the rest of the season? Probably the mm. same spot. Really? Okay. Yeah, I, I would draft him 15 spots lower. I'm, I'm really worried about this. Oh, uh, you'd move him down? Yeah. I don't, I honestly would wonder if I would draft Zach Ertz over every tight end right now. Really? Yeah. Oh, you you should. Wow. Yeah, I, I would. I w- I'm all about Zach Ertz. I mean, the targets are there. The production is there. I mean, he did this it against Arizona, so like there's yes. no bigger test than that. Mm-hmm. Exactly what I was going to say is the big test is Arizona has been shutting tight ends down for quite some time now. And now granted, Arizona traveling to the East Coast for morning games, it's there is a long history of them just not showing up to play. But still, for them for Ertz to have had the game he did against that defense, he he was already a weekly starter in up there with the elites. But I'm with Tags. I I think Ertz is the the top tight if you were redrafting right now, Ertz will be the the top tight end pick. Interesting. Um, the, the other one that kind of bothers me is Devontae Parker, just because the Dolphins are so bad. Like, I know they're in the playoff picture, but I could see this being an instance where they're like, you know, he's our young kid. We're not going to win this year. Let's take it really easy on him. And everyone thinks he's just going to come back right away. I'm not so sure. That's going to be one of my sells this week. Like, if you could sell Devontae Parker, do it. And that's, again, this is another guy coming on off an injury, but you might be able to get people like, oh, it's not a bad injury. They're already saying that he might play this week. But I think the real concern with Parker is that Jay Cutler might get benched. Jay Cutler's been awful. Like, there's there's literally no way to dress this up. He's been completely awful. Uh, he may get benched for Matt Moore. And Matt Moore, if you go back to the end of last year, Matt Moore was someone who spread the ball around quite a bit. He's not going to target Devontae Parker as much as Cutler would. So there's legitimate concerns with Devontae Parker. Yeah. And, and, conti- and obviously on top of the fact that his ankles nicked up. But one injury I would I would comment on is the fact that Charles Clay, he was becoming an every week starter for everybody. Yeah. And uh, he, he underwent surgery today. He's going to miss multiple weeks. So if you guys own Charles Clay, get out there, look for a tight end on the waiver wire. Maybe you can get Hunter Henry, who was dropped at the beginning of the season and is now playing a 75% lot of snaps. 75% of the snaps, man, I'm pumped. A lot, yes, yes. And I was all in on him this week, so I'm glad to see him get a touchdown and uh, him start playing more snaps because Antonio Gates, the time, as they say, is now. Now, you said, I want to go back to Parker real quick because you're selling him because you feel like Matt Moore will be the downgrade? Yes, in terms of target share. I just don't think that he's going to see the deep targets that he does with Cutler because I want to say that the stat was that Devontae Parker is seeing an average of like three and a half targets per game over 20 yards down the field. And he was seeing tons of targets with Cutler. And if you went back to see Matt Moore, it's not to say that Matt Moore is a downgrade quarterback wise, because I don't think you can downgrade from what Cutler's been thus far. But I also I do think that it'd be more targets for Kenny Stills. I believe that maybe he'd check down to Julius Thomas a little bit more, maybe get the running backs more involved. This offensive line just is not blocking very well. The defense is terrible. This entire team, I want no part of the Dolphins if possible. Yeah, the, my my counterpoint was going to be Kenny Stills' production last year when once Matt Moore came in. I mean, you have a touchdown every every week for the final four games, and mm-hmm. Matt Moore was taking more deep shots than Ryan Tannehill. It, the question would be then, does it go to Stills? Does, does it go to Parker? I feel like it would go to Parker at this point I think that he has just kind of earned that wide receiver two position on the team and just in the overall scheme Mm -hmm. it certainly could pivot back to stills but I I don't know if I'm a a sell Parker at this point yet because even with Jay Cutler being awful Devontae Parker has still been solid for fantasy purposes it it took uh some some of the stinkiest garbage you've ever (laughs) seen a timeout called with six seconds left when you have not scored in a game but Devontae Parker has still been fine uh, prior to last to yesterday when he, he left the game right away. So, guys, we're going to get to our top waiver wire pickups here in a minute. But first, a word from one of our sponsors. Um, so, guys, I got married when I was in college, and we went on a honeymoon to Gatlinburg, Tennessee, in this cabin in the mountains. To this day, the first thing that comes to my memory about the honeymoon is how the bed was so comfortable. Like, we just never wanted to wake up. I've always thought, like, having a great bed is the most important luxury. Now I have one thanks to Lisa.com. And not only is it every bit as good as that bed from the cabin, but it was a lot more affordable than I could have guessed, too. I've been sleeping like a champ even since adding the infant to my house a few weeks ago. Maybe my favorite part of the Lisa mattress, though, is that it's super healthy. It's not filled with all those chemicals that most beds are. Lisa was the fastest growing e-realtor in 2015 because everyone who bought the product 
product told everyone else how great it was. You can try it for yourself because they offer everyone 100 nights risk-free and with free shipping. If you don't like it, you can send it right back. And we've got a promo code for you. If you want to save $100 off your order, just go to lisa.com slash fantasy pros. That's L-E-E-S-A dot com slash fantasy pros for $100 off your mattress order. Okay, guys, let's talk waiver wires. And, uh, you know, as I was looking at this, I already mentioned there's a lot of running backs I like, but there are so many different ways people could go. I'm curious how close we all are. Mike, who's your favorite waiver wire pickup this week? He he was my favorite. Actually, I take it back. He was not my favorite running back to pick up last week, but my favorite pickup because I believe that he has worked his way into a a timeshare. And we're in a we're in a pretty gross fantasy running back situation where if you're running back, if you're getting 10 touches on the week, you got to start that guy. And that's Aaron <laughs> Jones from the Green Bay Packers. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, passed every single eye test this this week against uh, uh, the, the Dallas Cowboys. You're talking over 100 yards, a score. Looked like a just a better running back than Ty Montgomery. Montgomery is a, a fantastic football player. Great hands because he's the converted wide receiver. But it, but. Montgomery does not run the way that Aaron Jones can. Now, it was a bit of a mystery this weekend. You didn't know who was going to start. You had this weird Montgomery's practicing. He's hoping to play with broken ribs, which was ridiculous to start with. (laughs) The bigger problem was Jamal Williams, who took the two spot in camp, was ahead of Aaron Jones all year long. Then he uh, got injured You know, two weeks ago. It was said that was supposed to be a multiple game absence, but then he was practicing in full. Yeah, but Aaron Jones came in, stole the show. The the news was pretty late saying Aaron Jones is going to be the starter. So if you played Aaron Jones, tip of the cap, that was a victory for you. But I think that even when Ty Montgomery comes back, Aaron Jones is going to get those eight to 10 touches a week, which that sucks for Ty Montgomery owners, but it gives us another option at the running back position, which is really, really hurting this year. And he's on a high-scoring offense. It just – eight. I, I mean, are you with me on this tag that Aaron Jones looks like the best running back on the team? He looked phenomenal. And Jamal Williams was someone that I was advocating this preseason, saying that he had the number two job. He was going to get the first knock if Ty Montgomery went down. And the fact that he kind of complimented Ty Montgomery better than Aaron Jones, because Aaron Jones is more like a Ty Montgomery running back, where he's a solid receiver out of the backfield, not known as a much of an in-between the tackles runner. But this week, man, he impressed me. I know I know, he played solid against the Bears, and the Bears defense, I don't want to take too much away from that, but Aaron Jones was someone that I knew Ty Montgomery wasn't going to play. And when I did my write-up last week on the primer, I I said that Aaron Jones has RB1 value in, the, in this in this game. And then I started reading that Jamal Williams was practicing in full, and it was like, all right, I need to dial back a little bit. Yeah. But I still kept him as my number 14 running back on the week because wow. I figured he would be the, he would be the guy. Killed it, man. And uh, yeah, he, de- he definitely killed it. He looked just as good as he did against the Bears. Again, it's a matchup against the Cowboys, who are really a, a, an overrated defense at this point. Last year, a completely different team. They've lost at least three starters on that defense. Um, they've they got some young kids that could step up as the future goes, but right now it's just not a defense that you want to shy away from in fantasy matchups. So Aaron Jones, I love that call. I, I don't know how many leagues he's available in after last week because he obviously was someone that I was targeting in every single league. Now, Bobby, what do you feel about my top waiver wire ad? Marlon Mack. Marlon Mack's my guy, man. Really? Wow. Yeah, I mean, that's That's the thing. Is nobody, did, did you think that like someone, this was going to be a hot take or something? I, maybe it is because he's my guy, and you know I'm I'm the hot take guy or whatever. But yeah, Marlon Mack's my dude. It's it's a little hot for me. Well, we talked about Marlon Mack before the season, and the fact that so when you when you talk about the Colts team, what do you think? You think about a team that's going to be involved in a bunch of negative game scripts. They're going to be involved in a bunch of shootouts. They need to score a ton of points. Frank Gore just simply does not fit this team. You know, I mean, Frank Gore is is the type of guy who's a north south runner. He's going to get you two or three yards a pop. He's not going to lose yards. That's That's what he is. He's not going to break 20 yard runs. The Colts don't have a team that can support a running back like Frank Gore. They don't have a defense that can keep them in games and just and just keep, you know keep burning out the clock. That it's just not the game that they can play. Marlon Mack is lightning in a bottle, uh, and he's showed it. There's only he's there's like been a two Kareem Hunt played. light, right? I mean, he's nowhere near as good as Kareem Hunt, but they're the same type of player, and that's what Indianapolis needs. 
Well, he's a he's a big play guy. I don't know if Marlon Mack can hold up to the 27 carries that 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 Kareem Hunt is getting per week. But I'll say this, that Marlon Mack is someone you're going to have to live with the struggles in between the tackles, because Marlon Mack is not a guy who's going to he's, he's the opposite of Frank Gore. As a matter of fact, he's going to bounce runs outside. He's not going to he's not going to do well in between the tackles, but he is going to give you 80 yard touchdowns at times. And he has shown the big play ability. He can catch passes out of the backfield if you need him to. With Andrew Luck coming back to this team, this team is going to score a whole lot more. And they've shown that when Marlon Mack is healthy, he's getting 10 plus touches a week. And there's no reason to go back to Frank Gore. I'm I'm sorry. I, I know there's a bunch of Frank Gore truthers out there. And I know there's a lot of people that say that Frank Gore, you know, you get, need to give him respect. Screw that. Put the kid on the field and let him play. <laughs> Frank Gore, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Frank Gore is like a Mike Tolbert right now in, f- in fantasy football. And if he doesn't score a touchdown, he's useless. He's 40, 50 yards a week, and it's just not working. So Marlon Mack, get him on the field. He's, he's one of those guys where you pick him up, you put him on your bench, and you just wait for good things to happen. He's kind of like a like an Alvin Kamara, it seems like. Um, but once Andrew Luck comes back, this offense becomes a lot more potent and much better opportunities. So Marlon Mack, that's my dude. You know, the Colts can still make the playoffs. Uh, I know the Jaguars are first and point differential and they have the easiest rest of season schedule according to uh you know the records of their opponents but the Colts can still make the playoffs I don't think it's going to happen with Frank Gore get Marlon Mack on the field he can win you a fantasy championship too I'm not saying he's going to be an RB1 but he can be a top 20 running back the rest of the season if he takes this job I'm looking at all the other guys I mean sure they're in a committee they could be the technical starter but I'm not seeing anybody else, maybe Wayne Gallman, who can be an RB2. So, Mike, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to know what your knock is on Marlon Mack and why you're why you're against him. Oh, I love the player. When when he was drafted the, to the Colts, I would draft him, man. I was freaking out. I love nice. the pick. The problem is Chuck Pagano. That's <laughs> the problem is <laughs> you have a man who should not be a head coach of a football team making decisions, and that's why Frank Gore – continues to get the carries that he does. That's why Robert Turbin continues to outsnap a guy like Marlon Mack when everyone is healthy and playing. So that's my only concern with Marlon Mack is there's guys like Aaron Jones and Wayne Gallman who I think are, you pick them up, you can plug them in immediately. While Marlon Mack, you, I don't know. I I mean, 10 carries week one, he had nine uh, this past week. And he is, he is, and a dynamic football player who can he can give you that upside every single week. I just have concerns. And the I'm I'm with you for when Andrew Luck comes back that things are gonna be better. When is Andrew Luck coming back? I I know he's kind of practicing right now, but it's it, it it's everything is so murky and so cloudy there for the Colts. That's my only hesitancy to to throw down a huge fab or to burn a number one priority on Marlon Mack this week. I want to go back to uh, Aaron Jones really quick. Like, I love Aaron Jones. I was hyping him all preseason over Jamal Williams. I just, he's a great football player. I could see him being a top 20 pick in fantasy football if he was to somehow take over this job. But Ty Montgomery is really good. I know he wasn't exactly getting it done. He was getting a, a full workload and everything. But you have to remember the Packers offensive line, like, Everybody was injured. When Ty Montgomery was the running back, I think it was Scott Barrett from Pro Football Focus who posted this. If it's not, I'm sorry, I don't remember who it was. But when Ty Montgomery was the running back, he was getting 1.2 yards per carry before contact. Aaron Jones, since he took over, over three yards per carry before contact. And the reason why is because their offensive line's healthy now. Oh, certainly. I'm not calling for Aaron Jones to usurp Montgomery. I'm just saying that yeah. I think that his I, – I believe that Aaron Jones has taken snaps away from Montgomery when he gets back. Agree. When he's back, Montgomery is still the RB1 for that team. But they're going to – if they have a player that they now have proof of concept that he can come in and actually spell Montgomery, they, I believe that was the concern. You had a, a fourth and a fifth round rook, rookie running backs. Can you really trust them? Well, they – they got thrown in the fire. They had to trust Aaron Jones, and he came through in a big way. So I, I think that Mike McCarthy's the kind of coach that rewards that and says, good, good, Aaron Jones. You can get in there, and you can actually play for us. And here's the thing about Aaron Jones is like, while Ty Montgomery's gone, I know he wanted to play, but it's going to be two or three weeks. I mean, we're talking about broken ribs. While Aaron Jones is the starter, there is nobody else on the waiver wire who is even close to as good for fantasy as Aaron Jones. So, yeah, if he's available in your league, I'd probably spend – 50 60 fab bucks on him Uh, I don't think he is available in most competitive leagues Uh, Marlon Mack is available in what 80% of leagues and so Marlon Mack I'm spending about 25 or 30 on him 
Um, so of the guys available in, in 70 plus percent of leagues, Marlon Max, my top guy, how much are you spending on them? So, I mean, it really depends. Uh, so yeah, as, as, as Bobby mentioned, I think Aaron Jones is, is snagged in a lot of leagues, but if he's not, he's someone that I don't know if I'd go 50 or 60% because then you're essentially done on the waiver wire for the year. Because I mean, at this point you've most likely spent maybe 20% of your fab, whatever the case may be. And I just don't know if Aaron Jones is the type of player. He's going to give you another week, maybe two. Uh, but then it's going to become a timeshare. And yes, is he a great stash on your bench for like an upside play? Yeah, but he he's essentially becomes like a Marlon Mack or like a James Conner or something like that, where he's just a stash, and that's fine. I don't, I don't, I'm not. That's I, th- I think the player you ty- type of player you should have on your bench. But at the same time, if you need someone right now, it, it becomes a little more difficult, right? Because Wayne Gallman sitting out there, he's someone who's going to get carries right now. Elijah McGuire. There's a lot of names out there, but Marlon Mack. For me, yeah, I, I think you're right in that 20% range. I don't know if I would go 25, 30. I don't think you need to because I, I think there's still a lot of people out there that question Marlon Mack. I don't think they, they they do the forward thinking that we do in terms of looking at getting Andrew Luck back, looking at the defense and how they struggle. And I mean, to be fair, Jacoby Brissett has done a fine job with this offense. I don't think that he's necessarily like the worst case. It's not like well, like Deshaun Kaiser was doing for the Browns or anything like that. I think Brissett has actually been competent. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, Mac, I think I'm right around the 20% mark, but if Aaron Jones is out there, I think he's worthy of 35% maybe, uh, which still leaves you a little bit in case you need to pick up someone down the road. I don't think you're getting him for 35. Yeah, you might have to go more, but Jones is owned in 50% of Yahoo uh, leagues right now. So he, if there's a there's a possibility he's out there. I want to throw out, uh, this was my top claim from last week, and he still has to stay there at, as a, a really high pick. He's only owned in 56% of Yahoo leagues. That's Andre Allington, who, and I'm going to give you some names here, Antonio Brown, Beckham, A.J. Green. Those are the only three guys who have more targets than Andre Ellington in the past three weeks. The dude is getting an unbelievable target share because they can't run the ball. They have the corpse of Chris Johnson out there toting the ball 10 times for some reason, and then they get behind, and they have to throw to Andre Ellington. And while the the receiver core for the Cardinals, they're getting healthier. We saw John Brown actually out-snapping Jerron and J.J. Nelson for the first time in forever uh, this past week. But Andre Ellington is he is so necessary for that team. The offensive line is a dumpster fire. Chris or Carson Palmer is on pace to break the, the uh, attempts record in for passing it's it's throw 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 and they have to check down to Ellington with frequent high high frequency so I think that if you can get him it it, the fact that he's only owned at 56% of leagues is ridiculous because he's he uh he's not a sexy play by any means but sometimes you got to have that nice safe floor of a running back you say this guy's going to get six or seven even more targets per week. So I think that he is an absolute must pick up. And let's remember, he was drafted in the third, fourth round a couple of years ago. Like, this is a talented football player. He hurt his foot, lost his job, and hasn't got it back yet. He can play some football. Yeah, he's he's talented, but that's the problem. Is his body doesn't hold up. But at this yes. point, the Cardinals have no choice. They, they have to play Ellington. And why would they not work him into the ground? I, I believe this is the last year of Ellington's contract. They're not going to re-sign him. Use him up. I mean, that's what a, 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 that's, that's the right football move for the team. Yeah. No, Mike, and you're from Arizona, obviously. So you get to see all these games like, like really yeah. closely. You watch them closer than any other game. And I, I always appreciate the insight on that. My question is, why are they not giving him more carries? I, I mentioned it last week on the show. I, I, Andre Ellington was one of my favorite pickups as well last week. And the reason I say that is because Andre Ellington has never really struggled with efficiency. It's always been durability. Uh, but I mean, he's healthy right now. He's doing well with the touches you're giving him. Chris Johnson just doesn't get it done. Again, this comes down to what type of player do you need for your offense? And I think they need someone like Ellington to touch the ball more often not just in the passing game but one carry against the Eagles I mean I just <laughs> I, I don't know what Bruce Arians is doing with Chris Johnson I don't I understand why they brought him back obviously you know they had depth issues but why is Andre Ellington not getting more carries uh, I I don't know why they continue to give Chris Johnson the the carries that they do but the problem for Arizona is their their line I mean you potty their best run blocking right. guard he's out for the year Humphreys has been struggling at left tackle. I mean, it, it's their their interior of their offensive line is is gone or is it's backups, it's bad play. So I think that's that's why they're not giving Ellington the carries because they know they need his health 
to stand up. And so I think they feel that if, if they're grinding him between the tackles, they're just he's going to run out of hit points too fast, so to speak, to use, use a video game term there. So I think that's what they've said, that we have, to, we have to save him for targets in the passing game. Even so, he's fairly useful. I've got uh, six of my top seven waiver wire pickups this week are running back. So I'm just going to go ahead and list them. We can talk about a few of them. Number two is Wayne Gallman. Number three is a wide receiver. Uh, number four, Alex Collins from Baltimore. Orleans Darqua for the Giants. Uh, Elijah McGuire for the Jets, and then Matt Breida for, for the San Francisco 49ers. I can't believe he outsnapped Carlos Hyde, and it wasn't because of his hip. It was because he had, quote-unquote, the hot hand. Um, they, there's a lot of interesting also, also guys. Also known, it's, that's still his hip. That's, that's, that's <laughs> Carlos Hyde's hip was holding him up yeah. uh, from being the hot hand. That's a good point. I'm a Carlos Hyde fan, but I watched this game. I had a lot of Brian Hoyer in my DFS lineups, which, you know, back pat for me yeah um, but i watched this game yeah carlos hyde was very um inefficient this week and you know i mean I, yeah matt Breida is a fine backup um but i'm not gonna sit here and tell you that matt Breida is anything more than a handcuff to carlos hyde he's not and he's not going to outsnap carlos hyde again unless carlos hyde. i think this comes down to carlos hyde having a bad week I, I think every player is entitled to a bad week from time to time we saw Le'Veon bell have it at the beginning of the season is his hip bothering him a little bit maybe a little bit but i think this is more come came down to just a bad game and i know bobby you and i talked about it on the dfs show last week and that carlos hyde you want you talked about him in cash and my, my mention was that the colts have been a lot better against the run than people have given them credit for you saw them loading the box and what the 49ers were able to do were they were running a lot of play action it was working over and over and over for pierre garçon to start the game why they went away from from that I don't know as the game went on they should have just kept doing it because the Colts were more than willing to load the box against Carlos Hyde Matt Breida it, it opened things up a little bit but Breida make no mistake about it guys he is still just a regular handcuff I would much rather have someone like Elijah McGuire uh, who's actually yeah. getting meaningful snaps we have you know Bilal Powell with an injury we have Matt Forte who's inefficient and an injury um, Orleans Darkwa you know him and Alex Collins are in like the same conversation for me they're both on bad teams with bad offensive lines. I, I'd prefer not to grab them. I think Wayne Gallman is the running back in, the, in New York that you'd want. Uh, he's more of a pass catcher, and they may need pass catchers out of the backfield with all the wide receiver injuries. So it's really ugly for me after Marlon Mack and Wayne Gallman. I just don't really want Alex Collins or Darkwa or Breida or even McGuire. It, it's just it's not very it's not very pretty to me. I'd spend like four to six fab bucks on Collins and Darkwa and McGuire. I'd spend maybe one on Brita. Like, I'm not one of these guys who spends a couple bucks on on everybody and just, you know, make sure you get your guys. Like, the difference between a Mike Wallace, who's my number two wide receiver, and the best wide receiver you can pick up right before game time, there's, like, not much of a difference whatsoever. So I'm not going to spend a couple bucks. I want to save all my money, have two big waiver wire pickups during the year. And, uh, you know, there's really not too much that I love this week, but there are some guys who could become starting running backs. Like if Alex Collins becomes a starting running back and Joe Flacco gets right, there's a chance that he could be an RB2. But but again, this is this comes back to the offensive line, though, where I just don't Alex Lewis, their guard, Marshall Yonda. He went down. It reminds me of the Seahawks uh, where it's like, you know, people are left guessing every week between Eddie Lacy and Thomas Rawls and the pass catching running backs. And it, it's just something you don't want to do. You'll never feel confident putting these guys in your lineup. Alex Collins. There's been a few big plays that have padded the stats a little bit, but I'm not ever playing him with any confidence. I'd rather take an upside stash like a James Conner on my bench okay. in case something ever happened to like Le'Veon Bell. Wow. And you saw the short leash uh, that Harbaugh talked about with Alex Collins and his fumbling problem. Good point. You yep. saw it when uh, when Buck Allen was just thudding into the, the back of his offensive line over and over near the goal line. They clearly had no confidence putting Alex Collins in any kind of high pressure crucial situation like that and it's the Ravens are are very interesting like with Buck Allen where you have the entire last year they spend the whole season trying to bury him on mm -hmm. the depth chart it seemed like they tried to do that again with the addition of Danny Woodhead and then Woodhead goes down they're like ah crap okay Buck <laughs> get it get in there and it's just Every time that Buck Allen is in is because they, they just they regrettably do that and they they choke on whatever is they choke on their food, they choke on their water, <laughs> everything. And they just ah fine Buck, get in there. But there here he is. Here he is, getting all the touches, and I'm I'm with tags. Alex Collins is yeah, 
Uh, it, when you saw Ter- look, you saw Terrence West go down immediately in that game. That's that's the game script. You go, okay, well, Alex Collins can have yep. a huge touch game. Nope, Buck Allen. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's just a disaster there for the the running backs for the Ravens. So Tags and I both like uh, Marlon Mack and Wayne Gallman as our one and two. How do you feel about Gallman, Mike? I he's interesting to me because. I had I had kind of written off Wayne Gallman uh, over the the you know the off season. We're all scouting the running backs and everything. Wayne Gallman, I was never impressed at all with anything Wayne Gallman did on tape. And then he got put into a really bad situation with the Giants behind Paul Perkins, Darkwa, Shane Vereen. But now just through necessity, he's kind of moved his way up to the top. What gives me hope, some hope for Wayne Gallman, is the five receptions. If they have a running back, and, and he ran pretty well on top of that, uh, but granted, Darkwell was having a pretty solid game before him, and then Darkwell went down with the injury, so they had to go to Gallman. But the, if they have a running back that they feel can catch and be their primary rusher, and they don't just have to set themselves in situations where the other team knows that what they're going to do based on their personnel, I think that's the Giants need that right now, especially with all the wide receivers going down. Maybe, maybe there's a little more focus on the run game. Not that they're going to succeed necessarily. That offensive line's really bad. Mm-hmm. But Wayne Gallman, it, 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 what you will get with Wayne Gallman is touches. You will get some opportunity. And that's, like I had said with Aaron Jones, you know, we're wanting running backs who are getting 10 touches. That's where we are in the season. And Wayne Gallman should easily get 10 plus touches a week moving forward. It's essentially, it's a lost season for the Giants. You're over, your best player is done for the year. Find out what you have in the draft pick of Wayne Gallman. You know what Paul Perkins is at this point. You're going to move on. Orleans Dark was banged up. We'll see how, how the extent of that injury. But for me, if I'm running the team, it's okay, let's see what the rookie can do. So that, that's that's at least interesting for me that I want to pick him up. I'm with you, uh, Bobby, that I'm not going to spend a huge fab dollar on him, but I'm going to put in a bid that I that I feel confident will get will put him on my bench. And what do you think that is? Uh at this point, it's between if you're talking just a $100 budget, I would go I'd go in the teens. Yeah, I was thinking 12, yeah. 13 would probably do the trick and I'd feel comfortable spending that on Gallman. I mean, you look at Jordan Howard last year, they're the same type of player, in my opinion. I, I know Gallman can catch and everything, but I'm saying like the same range of talent. Uh, Jordan Howard hasn't sure. exactly been getting it done, but everyone, when he got the job, was like, well, we'll see what this rookie can do. Maybe Wayne Gallman can explode onto the scene like Howard did. I'm not saying I'm banking on that, but there's a chance, right? Well, Howard just has a really good offensive line. The Bears' offensive line is underrated. Uh, the Bears' offensive line has been really, really good. And Jordan Howard has been playing through a shoulder injury. He's been playing somewhat well. Uh, so it's just it's hard for me to put a lot of faith into Gallman considering how bad the Giants offensive line has looked. But again, you know, when Mike's talking about it and the fact that the running back position right now, when you have someone who is getting anywhere from 12 to 15 touches a week, they're an automatic start for yeah. me. Like, it, I don't know if you like if you've done your running back rankings this week, it's it's ugly. Like once you get outside the top 20 running backs, you have no faith in any of those guys. So you're just looking for an upside play. And if you're looking for someone like, let's say you lost David Johnson, you lost Dalvin Cook. You're just looking for someone to get by. I'm I'm willing to spend 15 to 20 percent on Wayne Gallman if I have to in order to sure up, you know, uh, an RB3 or flex spot. So we covered all the running backs I really like. I mean, Alfred Morris is on my radar just because we don't exactly know what's happening with the Zeke thing. Is there anyone else on either of your radars for running back before we move on to wide receiver? I think we touched on a lot of them. I mean, he's uh, I'll just throw the name out. He's most likely owned. But Alvin Kamara coming off the bye week, there's a there's a chance that one of your owners thought they could be cute and slip him through. Yeah. On, on the waivers. So just, just have a little peek. Yeah, I, w- I would pay quite a bit of money to get Alvin Kamara on my team. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's probably not there, but like crazy things happen. And I will, I'll give you a tale from my personal league. And this is why always check. Check every single day who got dropped and who did not. So waivers ran through last week. Aaron Jones, I, was, I had a, a sizable bid on him. Unfortunately, I lost out. Then on Sunday, I'm going to to do the final uh, lineup set. I'm like, well, let's see what's going on in the waivers. And I'm like, wait, what is this? The person who picked <laughs> up Aaron Jones dropped them on Saturday. Oh, and wow. Nobody got to play him. No. he. Someone saw it and picked Aaron Jones up for $0 on Sunday morning. Oh, and oh I, man. So the, 
they don't go back on waivers in that league then. Right. Well, it, it runs every single morning. A fab runs through, so they don't. There's no two day waiting period. That's amazing. Oh, so that's I just my heart shattered <laughs> into a thousand pieces. <laughs> So that's what I'm saying. I'll check every single day and check if someone tried to sneak Kamara through the bye week. There you go. So over at wide receiver, there's really only one guy I like all that much. I mean, J.J. Nelson and Mike Williams and Mike Wallace, they're all on my radar. Roger Lewis. But my guy's John Brown. He's owned in less than 40% of leagues. Uh, he's right back to getting a bunch of snaps. He looks like he's at least fairly healthy now. And we know what John Brown can do. So, uh, Mike, who's your number one receiver? And then we'll go to tags. Uh, John Brown is definitely up there. And I would say that the number one pickup, I don't know his ownership percentage off the top of my head, so I'll do a little peek while I'm talking. It's Devin Funchess, and I, I, we're in a strange world here where you want Devin Funchess on your team. He's owned in 64%, so he's owned in the majority, but he's absolutely worth a peek. If he's available, he would be my my number one guy. I think that's if I'm ranking guys, it would go Funchess, I think I'd go Wallace, number two, as Joe Flacco continues to get healthy. It, we have two weeks now of of big plays from Wallace. Do you guys remember this offseason? Mike Wallace was the was the hotness this offseason on draft Twitter. Everyone was so excited to get Mike Wallace late in your, your fantasy drafts, and Jeremy Macklin showed up and kind of blew that into pieces. But Mike Wallace, I think, is absolutely uh, worth the add. And the deep name that I'm going to throw out is Ricardo Lewis, Cleveland Browns. He's making some plays. There was uh, some strange, granted, strange chatter over the offseason from beat reporters in Cleveland saying it's possible that Lewis beats out Corey Coleman for a starting job on this wide receiver core. Now, clearly that didn't happen, but the point being that the team likes Ricardo Lewis. They're getting him on the field. He's making some making some things happen. Uh, who is the quarterback for the Browns next week? I don't know. Is Kevin it Hogan. It's got to be. It? It's got to be Hogan. Yeah. yeah, it's more than likely going to be Kevin Hogan. And that just then it's it's the hope. Everything is about hope in fantasy football. Add right. these guys with a little bit of hope. So those will be kind of my my top picks because honestly. I don't know what to do with Will Fuller, and I think that everyone that people are going to throw way too much money at a guy who's getting two to three targets a week. Yeah, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm out on. I'm Fuller. with you. Avoid, I think JJ avoid Zacharyson. Fuller. Like I'd take him for four fab bucks. He's going to go for thirty though, right? Uh, yeah, Zach Reeson uh, mentioned it on Twitter last night, saying that <laughs> Will Fuller is Chris Thompson of wide receivers. Like, don't, yes, don't, don't, yeah. go, don't go out of your mind here. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm aboard his take there. Uh, John Brown is also my number one wide receiver. Uh, that, that one's pretty simple for me, just because John Brown. The question with him has always been, you know, his durability. It's kind of like Andre Ellington, the fact where if these guys stay on the field, they produced, and uh, he played actually 48 snaps this week. Fitzgerald played 57, but Jerron Brown and JJ Nelson, 36 and 32. Yeah. So he was clearly running as the number two wide receiver this week which I mean that's that's great news for John Brown all we want to do is see this kid stay on the field stay healthy and, and produce fantasy points um Mike Wallace I don't know if I love Wallace I, I I think that the matchups have kind of played in well I mean he caught three balls against the uh, against the Raiders this week a team that's very prone to the deep play they've been beat deep a lot this year I think that Jeremy Macklin is the wide receiver to own there but st Wallace is still worth a pickup for sure Devin Funches I want to mention though <laughs> I was doing my primary I already wrote up the, the Panthers matchup and uh do you, did you know that since Greg Olson went down, uh, Devin Funches has 27 targets to Kelvin Benjamin's 12 targets? Yeah, I'd, I'd rather have yep. Funches than Kelvin Benjamin right now, man. You were right on the it's money nuts. in the preseason on your Funches take. Dude can play some football. Yeah, since the start of week two, Devin Funches is the number 10 wide receiver in fantasy football. So um, pay attention. Uh, he did get dinged up a little bit, so I'm going to pay attention to his practice participation. But if there's one player that I really want you guys to take note of and add to your bench, because it's not often that we can get a player who's going to be an every week contributor uh, on the bench. But Juju Smith-Schuster has been playing a lot of snaps, yeah, he has. and he's been seeing targets more often. Uh, you know, Eli Rogers has become indispensable. Like, they, they just kind of push him off to the side. Uh, Martavis Bryant is not clicking with Ben uh, He was hurt this week, Antonio too. I think that's part of the reason Juju played so much. Well, uh, Juju played a lot the week before. They made Eli Rogers a healthy and active the week before, so they're moving forward with Juju. And well, well, we're talking about, like, the fourth target on a Pittsburgh team where Ben Roethlisberger is talking about, like, giving up on life. 
Well, he is giving up on life, and he's not doing a very good job of playing football <laughs> as last year. Uh, I mean, but I think he learned this week that he can't just target Antonio Brown relentlessly and expect results. Like, I, I watched it over and over this game. I, I'm, I'm, as I'm watching that game, I'm thinking to myself, you know, I know Antonio Brown is a phenomenal receiver, but there's reasons that some wide receivers like Des Bryant, like Jordy Nelson, didn't receive 18 targets this week, even though they had plus matchups. Because if a team is willing to focus their attention on that wide receiver, you have to go elsewhere. And if Ben Roethlisberger actually looks at the tape and goes through it and says, you know what, maybe I need to spread the ball around a little bit more, maybe not make sure, you know, me and Antonio Brown are on a great page or whatever. I think Juju Smith-Schuster has a talent. I think he's a playmaker. And if something were to happen to either Martavis Bryant or Antonio Brown, he immediately walks into wide receiver that's a good three call. every single week. So that's why I like Juju. Um, I just think he's going to be involved every week playing out of the slot with them. He's just, I'm not saying that he's someone that you could spend a couple bucks of your fab and get him on your bench. And he's like that upside stash. I also like Mike's call of Ricardo Lewis. He's a guy that's, you know, I, a lot of people say sometimes targets are hollow. But they're really not. Targets equal opportunity, and that's all we can shoot for in fantasy football. If you're getting targets, you're doing well. Kevin Hogan has looked a lot better than Deshaun Kaiser, who, again, I, I just I don't understand. I know Deshaun Watson is really overcoming that and looking really good for a rookie, but I, I really just don't like when they threw him in there from day one when his college coach had said he wasn't ready for the NFL. Like He still had a lot of growing up to do. And watching Deshaun Kaiser on the field... I mean, I, I don't know how people can't see the, the arrogance with this kid. Like he just it, he, he walks around like he's a veteran. He yells at players. He, he, he makes stupid mistakes. He doesn't sense pressure. There's a lot of problems with his game. So to see him benched, that it took a lot for that to happen. And I'm glad it did because Kevin Hogan should be starting for this football team. Deshaun Kaiser should sit on the bench and be forced to learn like a rookie and kind of work through it. Uh, I'm waiting for Isaiah Crowell to get benched, too, by the way, because his play has been atrocious and. Duke Johnson has been so much better. I just, I don't know how long it can go Even on. Even give Matt Days a, a, a pickup, like in deep leagues, pick up Matt Days, because I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up with his starting job. Yeah, it's 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 ugly. Isaiah Crowell, I mean, Bobby and I, we've talked before the season that we don't think it's the talent. We thought the offensive line was going to block enough for him to be an RB2 in fantasy, but that hasn't even happened. Uh, he's he's garbage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's really no way for so him to So I, I like Ricardo <laughs> Lewis. I, um, you know, I, I wrote about him in my bold predictions piece that I thought he'd be one of the top pickups this week after a big game. It didn't really happen, though. I'm not sure he has much of a ceiling. And I like to pick up wide receivers with a ceiling. So you mentioned Smith Schuster. I think he's got a decent ceiling. Like you mentioned, if someone gets hurt, he's a start pretty much every week. But my guy that we haven't talked about yet is Mike Williams for the Los Angeles Chargers. We don't know what he is. He's finally going to play this week. I know Keenan Allen's there. I know Hunter Henry's there. I know Terrell Williams is there. But Mike Williams is a really good football player, and maybe he gets thrown into the mix and just goes nuts. So I'm picking up Mike Williams for a few bucks this week. You also forgot about Travis Benjamin. I mean, well, I mean there's yeah. just there's too many guys in San Diego, or I apologize, in Los Angeles <laughs> for for me to really have interest in a rookie who has missed training camp. Got no reps. Exactly. Got, That's it, my issue. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe next year. Remember when Odell Beckham missed the first four weeks and didn't get any reps and then he just dominated? I will I will literally PayPal you a hundred dollars if you could get two <laughs> on two other instances. That was the best response you could have. Yeah, had. that was that great. Was awesome. I mean, look, I, I know, and I because I get that argument. That's the argument that the the hopeful fantasy player in me wants to make. But when you're like, I've had a we were in the office talking about something. I think I was. Oh, we were talking about um, uh, Josh Doxson, that the catch the the where he didn't he didn't come down with the ball in the end zone. And I'm like, guys, that was a that's a tough catch. That would have been an amazing air. play. Yes, and and they're like, Larry Fitzgerald would have came down with it. I'm like, you're comparing to one of the greatest of all Josh time. to to a, yeah. But you just that's not fair. That's not fair to compare those two things. So <laughs> I think to to expect Mike Williams to come into this to climb that depth chart where yeah, I'd be surprised if he was getting 30% of snaps by the end of the year if everyone stays wow, healthy okay. on that team. So while I'm I'm with you, I'm optimistic on him for the future. I'm, I'm I I've waved the white flag on Mike Williams for this year. Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm with Mike on this one. The fact that, you know, missing all those reps with Phillip Rivers is massive. And, and think about it from this sense of the fact, like, we all can s clearly see on tape that Hunter Henry's a better tight end than Antonio Gates right now, right? Like, that's, he's amazing. That's a given. He's a great tight end. Right. 
that's what I'm saying is like, and yet the chargers continue to stick a veteran out there just because that's what they Good do. Call. And Good they continue point. to lose games because the, yeah. And that's what I'm saying is like Mike Williams. I have no issues with the talent. I feel like in dynasty, you can get him for a lot cheaper than he probably should be right now because he can be that number one. I think Keenan Allen is a guy who's seeing tons of targets and he's just not the number one in an offense. He shouldn't be. He should be looked at as like a golden Tate type player who, yes, you can, you can target in an offense, but he shouldn't be the focal point. I don't feel like you, you, you can have Keenan Allen as the focal point of your offense offense through the slot so I think Mike Williams again in dynasty sure um but going down I mean how do you guys feel about Jerron Brown now I mentioned it last week that I felt like it was a trap playing him but I felt like you also kind of needed to with the targets that he had seen because it was like three weeks gone by 29 targets like how do you not play that guy but let's say someone drops him like someone dropped him after last week what would you guys do would you guys pick him up over someone like Juju Smith Schuster or Ricardo Lewis I've got him right behind Lewis right behind Schuster and right behind Marquise Goodwin for the San Francisco 49ers Uh, I I don't think Brown is ownable in a standard 10 team league 12 team league he's like right on the fringe like you if you have to pick someone up he's a decent play but uh, he's in that range with Jermaine Curse and Nelson Aguilar for me not interested what do you think Mike it's it's tough because it's not just the targets. I mean, week three and week four, he played over ninety three percent of the snaps. It, it, it he's on the field. Uh, the question is just it's John Brown. The health has been fluctuating so extremely that I think uh, while I want to pick John Brown up, I want him to be on the field. There's just no guarantees that he will be. And if if John Brown has some kind of relapse in the health, Jerron Brown will be the guy that the team turns to as well and he's he's still the wide receiver three on a team like I said Carson Palmer's on pace to break the passing attempts record so I don't I wouldn't drop him you like Brown over JJ Nelson yes yeah I do I mean JJ Nelson is is he's the splash play type of guy but Jerron look the team the, the Cardinals and sorry I've been giving you weird you know this is hometown analysis but he tore his ACL they extended him the next day after tearing his ACL last year. The, the team likes Jerron Brown. They, the team has Jerron. He is part of the future of this wide receiver core. At least that's what their actions have said. So I'm still in on having Brown. I think he should be owned. You probably can't play him right now. But, I mean, he's the, the call with him with the Ricardo Lewis and those guys, I think he's right in that tier. But it's just for... The Cardinals, when, when the Cardinals passing offense is going, then there's a lot of fantasy points to go around. The problem is it's not going. Yeah. It's not going very well right, right now. And I, I feel like one name that we should really mention, I want to get both of your guys' takes on. We know that Mohamed Sanu is going to miss multiple weeks, right? Julio Jones, it's not like he's, again, this isn't Matt Ryan doesn't do what Ben Roethlisberger was. He, he does. He doesn't target Julio Jones 20 times a game. It just doesn't happen. Granted, this week it might happen against the Dolphins, but Taylor Gabriel, Tell me Love he's it. not worth an ad, ad right now. Like they're, they're playing at home on the track, like in a matchup against the Dolphins, who are very prone to the big play. They're still without their top safety, TJ McDonald, who is suspended until I think week 10. I think Taylor Gabriel is worth an ad if you need someone for this week. Oh, man, I love it. I mean, he's he gives you juice to your lineup every single week, and this is just an even better per week in particular to play him. You had last year, I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but there was a stretch of of – four or five weeks where he was literally a top 10 wide receiver over that span. So yeah. it's, mm-hmm. it, it is a little spotty and inconsistent, but the opportunity and the matchup is so great for Taylor Gabriel this week. I think that's a great call. I would absolutely pick him up because people, people won't be thinking about him. He was on a bye week, right. which means he hasn't played football in three years when you're talking in fantasy football <laughs> timelines. So people have forgotten about him. And they're going to forget about the Snoo injury. So I think that is a fantastic call, Tags. I'm all aboard. He's a one-week streamer for me. I like Taylor Gabriel as a uh, – he's my number 18 player on my board. So I don't know. I, I'm not super interested. But, yeah, for one week, if you need a guy, he's a, he's a good pickup. Yeah, and Ro- is, is Roger Lewis someone that you guys would pick up, like as a, as a speculative Yeah, I've got him at number yeah. 11. I, I'm pretty high on Roger Lewis. Yep, I'd pick him up. Before we before we go to tight end, let's, let's talk fab and, like, how much you would spend. Like, John Brown is on your waiver wire. How much fab do you spend to get him? Eight dollars. John Brown is on my waiver wire. Yeah, I was gonna go right around that eleven to fifteen for John Brown because you know the upside of John Brown. It's a thousand yard receiver. If he's actually back or close to it, then he I would I would spend up to get him. 
I would agree. I think he's worth 15%. The fact that he's running as the number two, he went ahead of John Jerron Brown just one, just basically one week after coming back, you know, like playing the limited role in week uh, in week four. I, I'm I'm in on John Brown, yeah. and it's just like I was before the season. It's very it's very rare that you can get an every week starter on the waiver wire this time of the year without an injury. Uh, but Jerron Brown is an every week starter, you know, is like in a 12 team league. I feel like you could start him as a wide receiver three and deal with the ups and downs. It's not like he's been the most efficient wide receiver with his targets this year. He's only caught nine of 23 targets. But at the same time, it might just be getting back in touch with Carson Palmer, who, you know, like they haven't played together very much. It's like John Brown has not been himself. And so getting back into the curve of things, it's just Larry Fitzgerald. Can I, can I mention like, so Mike, can I get your take on this too? Is sure. Larry Fitzgerald someone that you would sell? Um, because honestly, I feel like he's had great matchups for the first five weeks. Like every single game that he's played has been in a, in a great spot. And, and really the only game that he, he like dominated was against the Cowboys. And he saw 15 targets in that game outside of that. I mean, I know he scored against the 49ers, but going into overtime, he had 13 yards and three catches. Like, <laughs> yeah, Larry- he's the guy I'm selling. If we did the buy sell segment, I'm not sure we're going to have time. Larry Fitzgerald's the guy I wrote down to sell. For sure. I don't blame you, but with with the Bucks and the Rams coming up, I think that he's he should still be in line for at least at least on paper, the matchup is good for for Larry and he's he he's pretty dominant when it comes to uh generally speaking, I should say, uh in division games. He really shows up for those. That's so, true. So with Tampa Bay at home, we just saw what Tom Brady did to them. And I mean their mm-hmm. Tampa Bay's defense is hurting all over the place. And the Rams, despite this past week with Seattle, the Rams have been giving up a whole bunch of points. So I he's not a must sell. Everyone has every man has a price. Ted DiBiase, the million dollar man, has taught me that. So if you can get something for Larry, I'm I'm okay with selling. But I may want to hold on for this Tampa Bay game and roll the dice, see if that value can go up just a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, my other wide receivers, I'd spend two bucks on Wallace, one on Nelson, one on Williams. Um, I'm not going to spend big bucks on these guys. Like they're all virtually interchangeable, and one of them's not going to get picked up. So just wait and pick them up for free. That's my opinion. I agree. Yeah, John Brown for me is like a 15 percenter. Mike Wallace around that eight to 10 percent range. If you if you need a wide receiver, Juju and everybody else is kind of like five or below. I'm not really willing to spend up. And again, Taylor Gabriel, if you're looking for a one week play, I think he's a phenomenal play this week. And, you know, Bobby, I think you mentioned it, but the buy sell. A lot of people have told me that they love that segment last week. We're going to make we're going to have it return, guys, just because of all the positive feedback. We're just going to get to that during the sit uh, the start sit show that yeah, we do sounds good. on Wednesday. So. Yeah, well, we'll touch on that then, but you guys want to talk about a couple tight ends? I don't want to talk about any tight ends because there's no options out there. <laughs> Austin Severian Jenkins is the one guy. I'd spend a dollar on him. That's it. Otherwise, I'm picking up some uh, what? David Njoku, Only maybe. A dollar? <laughs> yeah, I'd spend one what? buck on ASJ. That's it. I'm not interested. Wow. I'd, I'd talk, talk him into it. I mean, I'm like a big ASJ truther. I've been talking about him all preseason. I was like, pick him up in week two. He's going to come back and he's going to yep. be the dude. But like... He hasn't looked that great yet. I know he's just learning the offense and everything, but the difference between him and whatever garbage you're going to find on the waiver wire is not that big, in my opinion. Uh, I mean, targets are tough to come by yeah. at the at the tight end position, so I, I would definitely spend more than a dollar for ASJ. I mean, you got the Charles Clay people are myself included. I mean, it's slim pickings for for the tight end position right now. So I think. That if you lost Clay, ASJ has to be your top priority. I don't know who else. Like, what other tight ends for this particular week? Ryan Ryan Griffin. I mean, who right. else? Well, who else are you interested in? George Kittle. Well, yeah, and let's not forget who yeah, ASJ yeah. plays. Kittle. Oh, let's let's not forget who he plays this week because he's playing the Patriots, guys. The Patriots. Here's what they've allowed to tight end so far. They've allowed uh, the Chiefs to have two top twelve tight ends. They allowed Kobe Fleener as a top twelve tight end. Ryan Griffin, number four tight end. Ed Dixon was the number seventeen. <laughs> Ed Dixon, one hundred seventy five yards. What a then, joke. <laughs> <laughs> And then Cameron Brait last week, 68 yards and a touchdown. It could have been more had he not dropped Everything. multiple passes in that game. Goodness. But that's what I'm saying is like ASJ is another solid streamer this week. So I, I'm actually I'm with okay. Mike on this side of the debate. And I'd say, I mean, if you're the one that streams tight ends, I think ASJ is worth you know, maybe six bucks because most people would probably just do the even five. I'd be willing to go up to six bucks for ASJ. But if you're streaming tight ends, you, you don't allocate too much funds to that. But I think, you know, Bobby, you mentioned George Kittle. I think David Njoku deserves some consideration. David with- Njoku's got like two receptions in his best game ever. 
but that's the thing with Kevin Hogan, with Kevin Hogan looking better than Deshaun Kaiser, with Kenny Britt ailing, with Ricardo Lewis as your number one option, they're going to need to involve David Njoku a lot more than they have. If I was a smart organization who wanted to win, I would throw the ball to David Njoku a ton. He's really good. The Browns are not that. <laughs> not Not just that, but I mean, the guy easily in his rookie year, has already climbed into my top five celebrations. I mean, the, the, oh, yes. the jump split that's kick ridiculous. slam, that's incredible. Get, I, would, I don't know how he does it. If I'm a quarterback I'm not, and I'm in the red zone, I'm throwing literally to no one else except for David and Joker because I want to <laughs> see that. I want to see that slam. Yeah, in my scouting profile for him this offseason before he was even drafted, I, I actually compared him. I said he's the tight end version of like Calvin Johnson. Like he's an athletic freak and he's like a massive man, not supposed to be able to move like he does. Um, but, yeah. but he's so big. I could see him being the best tight end in football someday. Probably like two or three years before he's even in the conversation. He's really good. Though. Oh, yes. He's he's a freak. And I, I said I'd take him over OJ Howard. And I mean, as of right now, Joku looks like the guy. Yeah. Okay, guys, quarterbacks, is there anybody like if you have to pick someone up i guess who are you looking at uh, no, don't don't go to me <laughs> i'm pretty much just the, just leave the quarterback spot empty today oh god yeah well the quarterbacks i mean usually like the streaming debate comes down to like i i want to go through my 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 process every single week and kind of find the the deep plays and it, brian hoyer was the one that i liked uh, this past week is just going through everything but it's really tough to say this early in the week which quarterback i like but i'm sure that we'll be talking about it during the start sit show on wednesday um and i'll try and get i'll try and get you guys a few streaming quarterbacks that you can pick up I, th- there's a there are a couple options just breaking down the the schedule you know that quick snapshot i kind of alluded to it, but carson palmer gets to be at home against tampa bay uh possibly a re-emerging John Brown. I think that that's going to be a good situation for Carson. They're just throwing the ball absolutely so much. We'll see on Sam Bradford. I mean, to be determined, right? We, we're recording this early Monday, so we haven't seen A, that he plays, B, how does he look, and C, mm-hmm. how does his knee respond. But he would get to take on Green He's Bay. He's my guy. Yeah, so I mean, he would be he, – he likely shoots to the top if he has another performance that's solid. Jacoby Brissett is one, just like 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 Mike oh, said, yeah, taking the a look at the snapshot. Yeah, Brissett at the Titans. The Titans are a dumpster fire right now, and Jacoby Brissett at least gives you a solid floor with his rushing ability. And um, the Titans don't have anybody to cover Ty Hilton as long as he's okay, because he seemed to be dinged up towards the end of the game this week. Are you willing to? I mean, we're still early in the week, but what does your gut say, Tags, about rolling out Kevin Hogan against the Texans, who? Could be without their well, they we know they're out JJ Watt and they could be out merciless. Right, but they might be out. They also might be getting Kevin Johnson back, one of their cornerbacks. Sure. And I just, I just worry. He doesn't about need to receiving. throw the ball to be fantasy, uh, fantasy relevant though. He could run for hundred yards again, like he did last year. He does run the ball pretty well. Um, I mean, I'd probably stay away from it. I think you can get Brissett. I think Hoyer. Uh, I'd probably start over him. And honestly, I mean, even looking, I, I want to see how Trubisky looks tonight. But he Are could you be guys in on he, Trubisky? Oh, I, I've been on Trubisky before the Bears even drafted him. I, Oof, I compared no. him to a player that is similar in a lot of ways to Andrew Luck. And I know that nobody wants to, like, I'm not, wow, I'm not, I'm not, I'm you not saying, are a crazy man. <laughs> if you read, no, hold on, I want you to type in Mitch Trubisky scouting report, Taglier. And if you put it in there, you can go through and it explains a lot of the reasons that Trubisky, and again, this is before he was part of my Bears. So this has nothing to do with hometown yeah, bias. I remember. I don't you were like, so pumped up when they got him because you love him. Yes, I do. And I I'm, I'm, I stood by that. He looked good in the preseason. I'm not going to take too much from it. He's got a really tough test tonight on, Mon- on Monday Night Football, but I'm pulling for him. Um, and one more name that I'd say to monitor, Josh McCown against the Patriots next week. The, the Patriots haven't been able to generate a pass rush, um, so maybe he could hook up with Robbie Anderson on a couple bombs. ASJ Plus should be on a, a big winning streak. <laughs> the Jets are the Jets are leading their freaking division. Like, what are we even talking about? The Jets can they they tried to trust the process, but they they did not process very well if they're shooting for the number one pick. <laughs> a- AFC Championship game, Jets at the Jaguars. Oh, oh God, this <laughs> sounds like the, this sounds like a nightmare. As Football a matter of fact, is, I need to go back done. to bed. 
It's, it's done. You can shut the league down. <laughs> um, so, so guys, uh, streaming defenses, I just want to talk about my one pickup this week that I like. It's Tampa Bay at Arizona. I know that you said they're, uh, you can pick on them and everything, but Arizona's offensive line is crummy. Tampa can really stop the run. It's not that Arizona's going to be able to run anyway, but you know, I think multiple sacks, a chance at interceptions, uh, fumbles here because Carson Palmer is a turnover machine. So it's not the kind of week where you have a great pickup, but I think they're the best of, uh, of the bunch. I think Atlanta's a great yep. play. That's that's exactly where I was going off the bye week. The Falcons get to take on the Dolphins. Dolphins cannot score points at all. So I think that I mean that, that that's the matchup I would go with. Okay. Mm-hmm. I like that one as well. All right, guys. Well, that's all the time we have for the podcast. Uh Mike, really appreciate you coming on, man. Oh, no, I appreciate it, fellas. Always a always a delight to my day to jump on with you fellas and talk some football. It's our pleasure. And for those of you listening at home, thanks for listening to today's show. We got two more shows coming up next week. Thanks again to the sponsors of today's show, lisa.com slash fantasy pros, where you can get $100 off your order. That's L E E S A dot com slash fantasy pros for $100 off your mattress order. And seatgeek.com, where you can get $20 off your first purchase, downloading the SeatGeek app and typing in the promo code fantasy pros. For Mike Tagliere, I'm Bobby Sylvester. Thanks for listening and enjoy your football. I just wanted you to watch me dissolve